Throughout my childhood and adolescence, if someone had asked me what impact stammering had had on me, my response would have been entirely negative. I would have focused on how much it interfered with my ability to communicate and to interact socially with other people, and how it was preventing me from fulfilling my potential. As I've grown older, and its severity has decreased, I found myself increasingly able to contemplate the possibility that at least some of my earlier experiences of stammering may actually have been beneficial to me. Anyway, this year, motivated by my own experiences, I decided to conduct a small survey asking other people who stammer to describe any positive impacts that stammering has had on their lives. My hope was that the survey might shed some light on a question that's been at the back of my mind for some time, which is, is stammering associated with any positive attributes? Or in other words, do people who stammer have any special qualities or strengths? This slideshow summarizes the results. Here's a quick summary of what the slideshow covers. First of all, I want to say a few words about why the topic's an important one, both for people who stammer and perhaps also for society in general. Then I'll discuss some of the reasons why it's likely that people who stammer do have some hidden strengths. By the way, I've described the strengths as hidden simply to emphasize that at least some of these strengths, if they exist, are probably not immediately apparent. Then I'll briefly outline what, re what previous research has been carried out that has looked at this question. And then I'll discuss the findings of the internet survey that I carried out myself earlier this year. And finally, I want to say a few words about how the findings of the survey potentially fit with what we currently know about the nature of stammering. I want to begin by saying a few words about how important this topic is and why it warrants our attention. First of all, the understanding that stammering is associated with some beneficial attributes is likely to be good for our overall sense of self-esteem. And this, in turn, can have an impact on how comfortable we feel with social interaction and our ability to portray ourselves in a positive light. But in addition to these general benefits, there's also an increasing body of evidence that suggests that speech therapy for stammering is more successful with clients who are more accepting of their stammering and don't regard it in the wholly negative light. The possible reason for this finding is that our capacity to resist the desire to avoid or to hide stammering it's likely to be strengthened if we can understand that it's associated with some positive and potentially valuable attributes. So yes, this definitely is a topic that's worth looking at. So why might we expect that people who stammer may have some hidden strengths? Perhaps the most obvious answer to this question has to do with the fact that the human brain is able to compensate for impairment in one domain by developing strengths in other domains. There are many examples of such compensation. Perhaps one of the best known is how blind people frequently develop exceptionally acute senses of hearing and touch, and such sensitivity may enable them to excel at certain activities. So for example, in Japan, many of the best practitioners of shiatsu massage are blind. Such compensations reflect br brain plasticity, the brain's ongoing capacity to develop and adapt to changing circumstances. It's noteworthy, however, that although such compensations may help effective individuals survive, overall those individuals still tend generally to be worse off than they would have been without the impairment. There is, however, also another reason why we might expect stammering to be associated with some hidden strengths that has nothing to do with brain plasticity and adaptation to impairment. Namely, the fact that stammering is largely inherited 
inasmuch as a strong predisposition to it is passed on in our genes, suggests that the genes that predispose to it may well have some hidden survival value. Otherwise we would have died out. To summarise, the finding that stammering is largely genetically inherited suggests that people who stammer have strengths that are more than just simply compensations for underlying weaknesses. On the contrary, it suggests that they have certain qualities that have some unique value, either to the individual or to the species as a whole. So how is it possible that genes that predispose people to stammering may survive the process of natural selection? Well, for a start, it's important to recognise that a single gene can regulate a number of quite divergent attributes, some of which may be beneficial while others may be detrimental. In such cases, if the beneficial attributes outweigh the detrimental attributes, the gene is likely to survive the process of natural selection, even though it may cause or predispose to certain pathological conditions. Also, it's possible that some attributes that are disadvantageous to us early on in life may ultimately bring us long-term benefits. And finally, although some attributes that we inherit may be detrimental to us, they may be beneficial to society as a whole. Genes that code for such attributes may also survive the process of natural selection. Before conducting my own survey, I did a literature search for any relevant work on a topic that already exists. I was unable to find any studies that investigated stammerers' own perceptions of their strengths or of positive aspects of stammering. However, I did find a poster describing a survey that was recently carried out by Hughes and Stragala at the University of Toledo. The survey asked members of the general public to give their opinions of the strengths of people who stammer. Four major themes were identified in participants' responses, which were as follows. First of all, people who stammer develop empathy and compassion for others. Secondly, people who stammer tend to focus on helping others. Thirdly, stammering results in personal growth or character strength. And finally, people who stammer work to compensate for stammering. Conscious of the Hughes and Stragala findings, I then proceeded to design my own online survey that asked stammerers to describe their perceptions of any positive influence their stammering has had on their own lives and on the lives of others. The exact wording was, please describe any ways in which your experiences of stammering have had a lasting positive influence on your own life and personality. And secondly, please describe any ways in which your stammering has had a lasting positive influence on the lives of other people you know or have come into contact with. I emailed requests to the British Stammering Association and also to a number of other stammering self-help groups for people who stammer to fill in the online questionnaire. In total, 28 questionnaires were completed. It's worth noting that stammerers who are in touch with self-help groups are generally quite well informed about stammering and generally relatively accepting of their condition, so they may not be entirely representative of stammerers in the wider population. As you can see here, the respondents included a mix of people with both covert and overt stammers. Here's a summary of the most frequent responses to the first question. As you can see, the most common responses involved empathy, receptiveness, sensitivity and or awareness of others. These responses directly from people who stammer are broadly similar to those elicited by the Hughes and Stragala survey, which investigated the positive aspects of stammerers perceived by the general public.
Here are some examples of participants' actual responses to the first question. I feel that stammering goes hand in hand with having a greater sense of empathy with others. I, being hypersensitive to others' perceptions of me, I've been able to become very attuned to what others are thinking and feeling. I've also developed extremely strong language skills, possibly in part due to substituting and planning words and sentences in my head before speaking them. Having a stammer has enabled me to become a good communicator as I don't take the spoken word for granted. Value communication in all its many forms and I'm a good listener. It's given me patience and empathy with others who have disabilities and struggle in life for various reasons. Respondents had more difficulty suggesting ways in which their stammering may have had a lasting positive impact on the lives of others. All the same, some themes did emerge. The most common being that stammering makes people more understanding of stammering and of disability in general. It enables one to help other stammerers via self-help groups. It inspires others to achieve and it helps others to open up. And here are some of the comments. Helps people to stop and think as it takes time to listen to me. People often report feeling quite relaxed when talking to me as my vulnerability, i.e. my stammer, is out there for all to see. I found this one particularly entertaining. Over my life I've experienced that women find it actually endearing that I stutter. I think they get a motherly feeling over them and they seem to want to protect you. Of course it's important to remember that these responses reflect participants' perceptions. One of the participants made the following observation which nicely highlights the uncertainties regarding the causal relationships between stammering and the strengths that participants described. I guess it's impossible to know what's the cause and what's the effect and what confounding variables are there. Do I feel these positive things as the result of my daily experiences of stammering or would I feel these positive things even if I didn't stammer? Do I just feel these positive things as a way to cope with my disability? It's noteworthy also that the two questions that we posed in our questionnaire to participants asked them to describe strengths that have arisen as a result of stammering. So it's possible that the wording of the questions may have influenced the causal inferences that they made. So for example, many participants said that stammering had increased their sensitivity towards other people. However, it's also possible that increased sensitivity may have been a predisposing factor that led them to start stammering in the first place. And it's also possible that both sensitivity and stammering may be the result of some other underlying factor. More than anything else, respondents equated stammering with the development of a high level of empathy. When I've mentioned the association between stammering and empathy in talks that I've given, a number of people have suggested that perhaps any impairment that substantially increases one's experience of difficulty and suffering in life may lead to an increased ability to empathise with other people undergoing similar experiences. So perhaps an increased ability to empathise may be a strength found in people with disabilities generally, rather than being unique to people who stammer. However, there's evidence that not all pathological conditions are associated with the development of increased ability to empathise. Indeed, some conditions, such as psychopathy and autism, are characterised by a lack of ability to empathise. So if stammering is indeed associated with a well-developed ability to empathise, we might predict that stammering should be relatively rare amongst people with psychopathy and autism. And conversely, 
psychopathy and autism should be relatively rare amongst people who stammer. This should be relatively easy to verify experimentally. Generally, the, t the term empathy is used to describe two distinct abilities. The ability to feel what other people are experiencing, this is termed emotional empathy, and the ability to understand what other people are experiencing. This is termed cognitive empathy and is closely associated with theory of mind. The fact that respondents perceive themselves as highly empathic reflects that they believe that they are particularly good at feeling or understanding what other people are experiencing. However, this does not automatically mean that their perceptions are accurate. So it would be useful to research how accurate Stammerer's um, experiences of empathy really are. Are we really good at perceiving other people's feelings and thoughts, or do we just think that we are? One of the most widespread beliefs about people who stammer is that they're generally sensitive people. So it's perhaps not surprising that many respondents cited sensitivity as one of their strengths. Sensitivity is essential for learning and for enabling us to adapt to changes in the world around us. And increased sensitivity is, is equated with increased intelligence. However, if someone is too sensitive, in other words hypersensitive, it can significantly interfere with their ability to function in everyday life. Many people intuitively equate stammering with hypersensitivity and there are also a number of theories that consider stammering to, ar to arise as a result of various forms of hypersensitivity. The extent to which people are sensitive to stimuli is regulated by neurotransmitters in their brains. And in this regard it's noteworthy that people who stammer have been found to have abnormally high levels of the neurotransmitter dopamine. Now interestingly, dopamine levels in the brain are at their highest around the time of birth and steadily decrease throughout life. And this reflects the fact that the need for new learning and the need for the ability to adapt is at its highest during the first years of life. Whereas once we've reached adulthood, we're able to function largely on the basis of the accumulation of past experience. Essentially, people become less sensitive as they get older and their dopamine levels decrease. And this can become a problem as people approach old age and find themselves no longer capable of new learning and unable to adapt to change. In contrast, people who are highly sensitive are most likely to have problems in early childhood. As they get older, their levels of sensitivity reduced to more manageable levels and when they get very old they're still likely to remain sensitive and adaptive. Consequently, in old age people who stammer may actually find that their sensitivity gives them an advantage over other people of the same age. This, de this decrease in sensitivity with age may partially explain why stammering is so much more prevalent in early childhood and why 80% of children who stammer have recovered by the time they reach their teens. Finally, I want to say a few words about the relationship between stammering and creativity, as this is a topic that is closely related to my own area of research, which is the relationship between stammering and speech errors. A major part of my PhD involved an investigation of the frequency with which people who stammer make mistakes when speaking. As a part of this investigation, we got a group of stammerers and a match group of non-stammerers to repeat tongue twisters over and over, and we asked them to stop each time they noticed themselves making a mistake. 
Overall, the stammerers self-reported about twice as many mistakes as the non-stammerers. So, for example, stammerers were twice as likely to mix up the sounds that words began with, and they were more than twice as likely to accidentally say the words the wrong in, in the wrong order. Interestingly, it wasn't just when speaking out loud that they made more errors. They were also more error prone when saying the tongue twisters internally, inside their heads. Other studies have also found similar results, and it's likely that this error proneness of people who stammer is not confined only to their speech. So, for example, some studies that have investigated the accuracy with which stammerers are able to make repetitive jaw and finger movements have also found that their movements are more variable than those of people who do not stammer. On the one hand, this error proneness may be seen as a handicap. However, the tendency to make errors and the tendency for our performances to vary also has a positive side to it, inasmuch as it forms much of the basis of our creativity. Essentially, if we never made errors, we would be far less likely to discover new and different ways of doing things. Much of the richness of human culture, including aspects as diverse as art, music and technological innovation, stems from our tendency to make errors. There are now a number of theories of stammering that posit that stammered disfluencies stem from our attempts to avoid or correct our speech errors. These theories predict that the more that we try to prevent ourselves from making speech errors, the more disfluent we become. Unfortunately, as long as we perceive speech errors as fundamentally undesirable, it's very difficult not to try to avoid or prevent them. However, if we could come to perceive our speech errors and our gen general error proneness in a more positive light, as the source of our creativity, we may find that what previously appeared to be a weakness, in as much as it causes us to be disfluent, in fact also has the potential to be one of our key strengths. To the extent that we can learn to embrace our tendency to make errors, we become able to realise the full extent of our creativity. And it could well be that this creativity ultimately turns out to be one of our most valuable assets. So finally, to wrap things up, what can we conclude from this study? Well, first of all, it's important to bear in mind that this is just a preliminary exploratory study involving only a relatively small number of participants, so we need to be cautious not to overinterpret the findings. Having said that, the respondents did identify a variety of strengths associated with their stammering and a number of ways in which their stammering had a positive impact on others some of which were in line with what we would predict on the basis of current theories of stammering and experimental findings. The relationship between stammering and the strengths reported by respondents needs to be researched experimentally to determine the extent to which respondents' perceptions are accurate. In particular, future research could profitably investigate the relationship between stammering and empathy, sensitivity, and creativity. In the remaining slides, I've copied and pasted some further responses that we received from participants. I've removed anything that may have revealed their identities, but otherwise they're unedited. Note that these remaining slides are not accompanied by any audio.